Can this condition be aggravated by other health conditions? Palsy is caused primarily by what I'll call mismanagement of the pregnancy. Uh, whatever it is that causes a, a, the hormones to go crazy during the process of the formulation of the fetus can lead to some malformation or development of the child's brain. And in the case of cerebral palsy, it affects that part of the brain that controls motor movement and also maybe some level of uh, muscle control. Uh, so now when then the next stage is during the delivery process, you have some children who are either premature or whatever, and they come out and they, you know, they, they, there's, a, there's a stressed, prolonged delivery. So the child comes out starved of oxygen or the umbilical cord wraps around the child's neck. Now, the doctors will always focus on saving the mother because the mother can always have another child, okay? And sometimes by the time they finish attending to the mother, the child has gone blue. Now, how long has the child been blue? If they can resuscitate the child, the child appears okay. Now, it takes time as the child grows before you begin to see that there's been some element of damage. And the damage, again, depends on how fragile the child is. Some kids are as solid as rock, okay? And they could cope with some new amount of uh, deficiency. And some are just very weak. And then those ones would also suffer. Then when a child that escapes these two options is now mismanaged either in terms of uh, sickness, like you have yellow fever, men meningitis, uh, you know, uh, typhoid and so on they can still have damage to the brain. Or in the course of playing, before the child gets to about four or five years old, the child falls, suffers trauma to the brain, hits the head on the side of a table, uh, falls carelessly, or is even mismanaged by a care. The child can still suffer cerebral palsy. After age five, the child has passed certain levels of developmental milestones. Neck is steady, can sit properly, and all that. It's no longer, the same thing could happen, but it now counts as uh, spinal cord injury and not cerebral palsy. Cerebral okay, um, palsy is a non progressive disorder. In fact, it is a lifelong disability that, there is, that has no cure. How can this condition be managed effectively? I'd like to correct you, it's a lifelong disability. It has no cure. Most people don't want to hear that. Right, so um, when you say it can be a lifelong disability, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are avoiding the fact that he has, he has a cure. And we, we need to help a lot of parents to understand that because most parents want a child in their own image and they will do anything to get that child to be better to get that child to, to improve. And there are lots of people out there, doctors, quote and unquote, who come up with all kinds of miracle formulas. There are traditional medicine people, there are religious people who will pray for you, who will do all sorts of things. So a lot of parents continue to live in denial for a, 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 a very long time, which is not good. There is something called early intervention. Early intervention is based on the fact that a child's brain develops like you have a laptop or an iPad that has nothing in it and you have to start loading software and it continues to grow and it has an infinite capacity to grow but it, it, there are some major features that the brain must have to cope further on in future and, they, and that development is attained at five years okay for a normal child for a child with a bad level of disability damage to the brain, there's still some level of development up to maybe age two and a half to three. So what that means is that for that child that could still pick up some the, the, the things, if we continue running from pillar to post looking for a cure, a prayer and so on for three years, we have wasted time that that child could start doing something. Whatever quality of life they attain in that short period is what will enable them to have a better quality of life as they grow up in the future. So that's why the world and Benola talks about early intervention. And it starts first with the parents. 
getting the parents to understand that yes with the right diagnosis we have identified cerebral palsy and then cerebral palsy has no cure so stop running around now what do we do how do we address this thing and then we begin to look into it you, you understand and then hopefully that will get us to the level people living with this condition are always tagged disabled but somehow they have some um Height of creativity in them. What advice do you have for caregivers or parents managing uh, people living with the condition? Um, if I can get a little religious here, hmm? God never makes a mistake. There is a purpose for everything that happens to us or every human being that you see, tall, short, fat, whatever. The reason why some of us do not fulfill, I mean, attain our full potential is that we keep looking at somebody else and because of that we feel that we are inferior or inadequate. The minute we stop looking at other people and focus on ourselves, that is what we can do and by implication focusing on that child and stop looking at what the child cannot do and start focusing on what the child can do and now see what we can do to help that child to maximize their potential everything changes. We suddenly have a child that we can celebrate. Can you imagine? He can sing, he can count one to ten, he knows colors and so on and so forth. On, there's a lot of assistive technology now, computers and stuff that we can bring in to help this child play music, do whatever it is and bring out the best in, their child, in themselves. Moving around is actually a challenge for people living with the condition. Only just recently that the state government, Lagos state government, uh, um, presented some assistive devices for people living with the condition. We hardly have policies, let alone infrastructural development, incorporating the needs of people living with, the, with this condition. In what way do you think uh, our government can um, turn around this um, status? I, if, I, if, I, if I had one minute with the governor, I'll tell him all you need to do is pass a law about accessibility. But we have, we have, we have, we have in Lagos State, we have the Lagos State Disability Law and we also have Lasoda in place. No, I'm coming. You see? Okay, so we have a law. Then we have to go one step further. We have to bring in what I call enabling create an MLB environment, okay? Now, we must come out with a law. Let me talk about transportation, for instance. Call the transporters, major transporters. How long, does, if you order a disabled-friendly bus, from order to delivery in Lagos, how long does it take? If you tell me two years, then I'll say, great. Now, we have some vehicles, can they be adapted you say yes. How long does it take? Maybe 18 months. Then 18 months, two years. I'll say, okay, give you three months extra. Maybe two, or six months. I mean two and a half years from today. All vehicles on uh, transport in Lagos must be disabled friendly. That's the law I want you to pass. And then you get, an, uh, you know, implement, uh, you put in the law to implement it. Now what that means is, for some of these people, we may even have to assist them with funding. Okay, but that means two and a half years from today, or, or even in, from, from now, nobody imports a vehicle that is not disabled friendly. We will manage what is available, and then by two and a half years, we have disabled friendly vehicles. Now we go to buildings. Every new building must, be, must have access, and we must have you know, enforcement agents that go around to inspect. If you're a public building, there must be access. There must be um, also toilet, disabled-friendly toilets. You must make yourself accessible to the disabled. Then, when you now put that in place, everybody now knows you're serious. Now, that is for new buildings. Then we also figure out with the architects, how long does it take people to now modify their buildings? Put in ramps, expanding one, or one toilet to make it disabled-friendly, and so on. Let me tell you, with 250, uh, like 25 million people in Nigeria with disability, walk the marts with Nigeria and see how many people are in Lagos. If you have a hotel, if you have a restaurant, if you have a movie theater, or any public place, and you begin to advertise that we are disabled friendly, 
then it means that most of the parents you saw today will be able to take their child. That's increasing custom for you, okay? And that's what you find abroad now. Every hotel advertises they have a, one or two disabled friendly rooms. Um, the, the hotels, there's stuff like that. So you must do that, okay? I mean, you, you know, His Excellency, the Lagos State Governor, has done a wonderful job. But he must go one step further. You must put time limit to these things. And then it works. Then the next thing, look, I could tell you a lot of things on what we could do, but that's where we're going. We must create a disabled friendly society. Now, as we create these societies, we must also educate the masses to be receptive. You see, I can go to the mall in Ikeja with my son on a wheelchair, but because it's a lovely place, everything is accessible, right? Wide ramps and everything. But the, pop, the people there, are they ready? They've come to have a nice Saturday or Sunday outing. It's not everybody that wants to see a child like that. Some people will even say, oh, why did you do this? You messed up my day. You, you understand? But when they begin to understand, and you find people come to you and say, oh, lovely son, you're, always, you're so nice, you brought a kid out, things change. There are lots of people who came here today, and they've said some very positive things. They wouldn't have come out two, three years ago. Okay? But because they've seen it happening, I can tell you on Facebook, there are lots of parents now who are beginning to celebrate their children with cerebral palsy. We need to see a lot more of that happening. But this issue of accessibility in, in the whole society would help everybody living with disability and even members of their family. Unfortunately, there's no cure for this condition. Can you please share tips? You've been managing this condition for the past 12 years. Can you please share tips on managing the condition? Um, hmm. The first of all is to accept the reality of what's happening to you, okay? And to begin to look at it from a positive point of view, okay? It is a very crucial thing that we have to do. Um, you see, until you accept your situation, nobody can help you, you know? In fact, most people will run away from you because if all you keep saying is, oh, it's not easy, we need help, we need this, people get tired of you. But when you begin to show the positive side of disability, then things change. When, like I said, if you see the good in yourself and you start talking about it, people have to see it and they'll begin to celebrate you and you become an inspiration to other people. Um, the world is celebrating the world's cerebral palsy. You started your, let's say, your own form of um, day to day by presenting about 21 um, assistive devices to um, people living with the condition. What are the line of opportunities you have for that day? Um, in the last five years, I've been involved with World CP Day in one capacity or the other. Online. I've never gone to Australia, but uh, we've been working. I, I help them to do assessments, to judge committees and stuff. And last year, they, they actually formed a 12-man committee to plan World CP Day this year. And I'm one of the people planning it. And what we've come up with is that, you see, disability can be managed from so many angles. The mistake the world, and particularly those of us in Africa, have done is to only see disability as a home and a school. Okay? So we, the, 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 the theme this year is we are here. All of us, every one of us, are here for cerebral palsy and disability. And what it means is that we can approach disability management from whatever area of specialization that we have. So we've been able to narrow the campaign to six themes. One is from uh, civil rights uh, to uh, uh, public awareness, education, medical and therapeutic, to quality of life, and uh, one other thing I can't remember. But you see, what it means is that if you're a tailor, you can start sewing clothes for people with disabilities, with special needs. If you are a lawyer, you can start looking at their rights, their rights to that proper, proper living and so on. If you're a teacher, you can look at how do we educate them. You see, it's like there's some, not everybody can learn. It's just that some people learn differently. So if they learn differently, we must come down to their level and figure out how to teach them at those levels. Uh, if you 
you know, quality of life, accommodation, food, transportation, whatever. How do we give them a better quality of life? Just, in the, you know, civil rights. They have the rights to, rights to life, right to all sorts of things. Medical therapy, it just goes on. So it's like wherever you are, whatever skills you have, begin to look at how you can use it. Don't think you have to be a Benola. Don't think you have to be that home in so and so place. No, whatever the Lord drives you to do towards making life better for disability, using those innate skills that you have, start using it. And so that's what is on. And I wish you all the best in all that you do in raising the awareness level on cerebral palsy. Thank you so much for sharing your um, thoughts and expertise with us on sound health. Thank you, and thank you for having me. That was retired Air Vice Marshal Femi Badebo OFR, the founder of Benola Cerebral Palsy Initiative on managing the condition effectively. Sound health continues with trending and home essentials. Please stay with us. The program continues in a moment. Well, that's the size of today's edition on Sound Health. Hope you've learned a few things about cerebral palsy. For comments and inquiries, please send SMS on 0818-815-3695 or follow us on social media at Health TV Social, hashtag Sound Health. A sound health is a sound mind. Make healthy living your choice. Mm -hmm.